Okay, so assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is your thermodynamics 2 class. Okay, and today is lecture number 14. Okay, so can anyone confirm what's appearing on my screen right now? Uh, can anyone confirm to me that what's appearing on my screen right now, please? Sir, lecture 14, chapter 9, gas power cycles. Okay, thank you so much. At the start of the lecture, I always try to confirm first because I want to know that my voice is clear or anything happens to my screen or not. Okay, so that's why I try to confirm during the start of the lecture. Okay, so now coming towards the uh, today lecture, which is again from the gas power cycle. Okay, so in the gas power cycle in the previous lecture, we already talked about one different type of uh, diesel cycle, which is a dual cycle, okay, which is a combination of uh, con constant pressure heat addition process and constant volume heat addition process. But uh, here uh, we will try to solve uh, other type of questions uh, or problems, which is also related to gas power cycle uh, and also from the dual cycle. Okay, so starting from the problem first. Okay, so first you have to read the statement. So an oil engine working on a dual combustion cycle. So here it is mentioned it is a dual cycle has a compression ratio of 14. So R value is known. Explosion ratio is 1.4 that I already explained to you in the previous lecture that between the constant volume heat addition process, uh, there will be the uh, the cycle. Uh, the process is called explosion process. Okay, and any ratio that is associated with that explosion process is called the explosion ratio and here we have to define the beta as an explosion ratio is equal to 1.4 if the cutoff occurs at 6% of the stroke so this is the data which we will sort out uh, when we look for the PV diagram and find the ideal efficiency for the dual cycle okay so you have to note down the statement first and note down the data then we will try to solve the question So again, starting from the PV diagram, I hope there will be no difficulty uh, that how to draw this type of diagram for the dual cycle. Okay, so from the data, we have already known that the compression ratio, which is your ratio of maximum volume to the minimum volume is equal to 14. And also it is mentioned that explosion ratio, which is beta, which is uh, the ratio between point number three and point number two so this is the explosion process between two to three which is a constant volume process and that pressure is uh, ratio is 1.4 it is given in the question okay so now here uh, rc value is not known to us but we have some data which is available that if the cutoff occurs at six percent of the stroke okay so if you remember that uh, this is your bottom dead center this point number two is at top dead center where there will be a minimum volume okay and the distance from BDC to TDC is called stroke okay so as it is mentioned if the cutoff occurs at six percent of the stroke so where is your cutoff point so your cutoff point is at point number four where the supply of fuel is stopped okay so if I can just draw the point number four over there on the same line of the stroke this is for example point number four and if the cutoff occurs 6% of the stroke, so it means that from the TDC to point number 4, that will be 6% of your stroke length. Okay, so whatever the length will be the stroke, and the point number 4 will be 6% of the stroke. So it's mean, and you already know that uh, the volume that is associated for the stroke, uh, between the stroke, is called swept volume. Okay, so from here you can say that the point number 3 to 4, 
it will be 0 0.06, which is, uh, yes, 0.06%, uh, 0.06 at 6% 6 of your V swept. Okay, so this is the data available. So from here, we can easily say that the value of V4 is equal to 0 0.06 swept volume is equal to V1 minus V3, which is the maximum minus minimum volume and plus v3 okay so this is the equation for v4 from this data we can easily find the cutoff ratio if i can just rearrange it v4 minus v3 is equal to 0 0.06 v1 minus v3 okay and by again rearranging it v4 minus v3 it's turned out to be v1 minus v3 is equal to 0 0.06 Okay, so if I take common from the numerator V3 and from the denominator V3, it turns out to be V4 over V1 minus 1 over V1 over V3 minus 1 is equal to 0 0.06. Okay, so from this, you can easily uh, figure it out that V4 over V1, uh, sorry, V4 over V3, because we have take common 3. V4 over V3 is equal to RC, which is your cutoff ratio, and V1 over V3 is equal to compression ratio. Okay, and from here I can easily say that RC minus R1 is equal to R minus R1 is equal to 0 0.06. Okay, so from this relation I can find the value of RC because compression ratio is known to me by from the problem statement. And if I can just uh, put the value of R in this equation, it's turned out to be RC is equal to 1.0. 7, 8. Okay, so now the compression ratio is known, cutoff ratio is known, pressure ratio is known, so I can easily implement the efficiency equation for dual cycle and find out the thermal efficiency for the ideal case. Okay, so you have to note down the question, uh, note down the data, okay, from uh, this slide, and then I will move towards the next part. And if you have any question, you can also ask me. Okay, as from the previous lecture, we already know that the dual cycle efficiency equation is 1 minus 1 over R compression ratio, specific heat ratio, uh, specific heat ratio minus 1, beta, which is the pressure ratio, RC to power specific heat ratio minus 1 over beta minus 1 plus pressure ratio into specific heat ratio into rc minus 1 okay so this equation we have already developed in the last lecture okay so now we have all the data uh, available to us from the previous slide so we can easily put the all the values so our value is 14 1.4 minus 1 k minus 1 and it will be beta value is 1.4 rc value we have just find in the previous slide 1.4 minus 1 1.4 is the uh, pressure ratio or explosion ratio 1.4 k value 1.4 it will be 1.4 and rc is 1.78 minus 1 okay so i have all things over there and if we can solve it it turns out to be 0 0.614 or it will be equal to 61.4 percent for your efficiency of dual cycle okay so this is the solution for this type of problem so only the main important step is how to find the RC value in this. Okay, so if you have any question, you can ask me and then you can note down the solution and then we will move towards the next part.
Okay, so coming towards the next question. Okay, so first you have to read the statement. The compression ratio for the single cylinder engine operating on a dual cycle is 9. So here it is mentioned dual cycle and the compression ratio is given. The maximum pressure of the cylinder is limited to 60 bar. So it's mean that your pressure at the constant uh, uh, pressure heat addition process, which is between 3 to 4, is given, which is 60 bar. The pressure and temperature of the air at the beginning of cycle are 1 bar and 30 degrees Celsius. So beginning is T1 and P1. Heat is added during the constant pressure up to 4% of the stroke. Okay, so from here we can easily say that it is the same meaning uh, which we already discussed in the previous uh, slide that your cutoff ratio occurs 4% of the stroke because the cutoff point and heat is added during the constant pressure. It's mean it is the same thing. Assuming the cylinder diameter and stroke length as 250 millimeter and 300 millimeters, so there is additional data available over there. Uh, we will see that how to use it. So 250 millimeter is your diameter of cylinder and 300 millimeter is stroke length. So what you have to determine is to air standard efficiency of the cycle, the power develop if the number of cycle are 3% per second. Okay, so this is the question. So you have to note it down and also you have to note down the data. Then we will see that how to solve it. And these all questions are from your reference book. So you cannot find in from your textbook. So that's why you have to note down all the data carefully. So again, starting from the PB diagram. Okay, so this diagram you have to draw it by yourself. Okay, so as it is mentioned from your question that uh, your maximum pressure, so maximum pressure is at point number three, and four it is 60 bar, and then your minimum pressure and or the start point P1, it will be mentioned it is one bar. Or temperature is also given it is 30 degrees Celsius from the start point so here if I can say it will be point number one okay so also it is mentioned that uh, from your question that heat is added during constant pressure process up to four percent of the stroke okay so if we recall it is your bottom dead center it is your top dead center and the length is the stroke okay and your Heat is added up to process number, uh, up to point number four. Okay, so this from three to four will be equal to 0 0.04, which is 4% of your swept volume. Okay, so from the question, we have already extracted this part as well. Okay, so from here, we can uh, find out some other parameters so as it is mentioned in your question that the cylinder diameter is 250 mm and the length of stroke is 300 millimeter so from this data we can easily find the v-swept okay so first we will try to solve for the v-swept okay, because we need some v-swept as well so as if you recall the lecture number one i have already discussed that vs is equal to pi by four diameters here for that is the cylinder diameter and then it is equal to length of the stroke okay and if I can solve it it will be pi by 4 so diameter is given in your question so you have to convert it into the meter and length of the stroke is 300 millimeters so again you have to convert it into meter and you will turn out to be the value of v swept as 0 0.0147 meter cube okay so vs is known to us now okay so now coming towards the uh, vc because we do not have the value of vc 
okay so we can find the vc value by using the compression ratio so compression ratio is equal to v swept plus v clearance over v clearance okay so v swept is known to us vc is not known to us r value is known to us from the question so from here if i can say it will be 9 and then it will be 0 0.0147 which we already find plus vc over vc so if i can solve this equation for vc it turns out to be vc which is the clearance volume as 0 0.0018 meter cube okay so now vc is known to us so from here we can easily find the v1 so v1 is equal to v swept plus vc so v swept is 0 0.0147 and v clearance is 0 0.0018 and from here I can easily find the volume at point number 1 as 0 0.0165 meter cube. Okay, so now these parameters are known to us. Okay, so now coming towards the, because we have to find all the temperature associated with the, all the points from 1 to 5. Okay, there is another way also that you can easily put the value of compression ratio, pressure ratio and cutoff ratio in the efficiency equation and you can find the part A but for the part B you need the temperatures because we uh, you have to find the work done per cycle and for work done the equation is mass into Q S minus Q R okay and for Q S we need the temperature because M C V and then there will be temperature final temperature emission so that's why we have to find all the temperatures in this question Okay, so you have to note down, then I will move towards the next part. Okay, so starting from the temperature, temperature 1 is known to us, so for temperature 2, we can easily apply the isentropic relation between 1 to 2, so T2 over T1 is equal to V1 over V2 K minus 1. Okay, from here we can say that V1 over V2 is equal to R, okay, and then T2 becomes temperature at 1, which is given in your question which is 30 degrees celsius and then v1 over v2 is equal to 2.40 1.4 minus 1 okay if we can solve it for t2 it will be 729.6 kelvin okay so now t2 is known to me now move moving towards the point number 3 Okay, so for point number three, I can apply one relation which is valid for your constant volume process. So for constant volume process, I can say P3 V3 over T3 is equal to T2 V2 over T2. And from this equation, I can easily eliminate volume because it is a constant volume process. Okay, and by using this, I can say T3 is equal to T2 P3 over P2. Okay, so but the problem here is that P3 is known to us from the problem, but P2 is not known to us. So first we have to find the P2. Okay, and in order to find the P2, uh, as from the isotropic relation as well, so we know that for isentropic relation, the equation that is valid is P1 V1 K. If you recall the first lecture for related to gas power cycle, so it will be this. Okay, and then I will just say that P2 is equal to P1 V1 over V2 our specific heat ratio and then from here because p1 is known to me from the question it is one bar 
and V1 or V2 is the compression ratio, which is 9 by 1.4, and it is equal to 21.67 bar. Okay, this is the value of P2, and now I have the value of P2. Now I can easily find the value of T3. The T2 value come from here, 729.6. P3 value is given to me from the problem statement, which is 60 bar. And then P2 value, I have just find out from here. Okay, so now if I solve it, it will be 2020 Kelvin for your value of temperature at point number 3. Okay, so now T3 is known to me. Now coming towards the T4. Okay, so for T4, I can easily apply another relation between point number 3 and 4, which is P1, uh, P4, V4 over T4 is equal to P3, V3 over T3. And I can eliminate the pressure because it is a constant pressure process. And from here, it will be T4 over T3 is equal to V4 over V3. Okay, but V4 over V3 is the cutoff ratio. RC is equal to V4 over V3. And cutoff ratio value is not known to us. Okay, so first we have to find the cutoff ratio. Okay, then we will implement this relation in order to find the temperature number 4. So you have to note down, then I will move towards the next slide. Okay, so if you recall the previous problem in which we have already derived one relation which is uh, RC minus 1, R minus 1 is equal to the percentage of uh, where there will be the heat added and okay or the cutoff ratio uh, or the cutoff point. It will be 0 0.04. Okay, so in this case. Okay, so I have just uh, applied that relation directly. So if you have confusion that how this come from, you can go to problem number one, which I already solved in the uh, start of this lecture. Okay, so from here, R value is known to me. So RC value I have to find. So if I can solve this equation for RC by putting the value of R as 9, it turns out to be 1.32, which is the value of RC. Okay, so now I can easily put the value of RC in T4 over T3 is equal to RC equation and then it will be T4 is equal to 2020 which is the value of T3 and RC is 1.32 and if I can solve it, it will be 2666.4 Kelvin is the value of T4. Okay, so now uh, I have the value of T4. Now one value which is left is T5. Okay, so as between 5 to 4, it is an isentropic process. So I can easily apply the isentropic relation, which is T5 over T4, V4 over V5, K minus 1. Okay, and if you recall the uh, verification of uh, the thermal efficiency of dual cycle, lecture um, which is the previous uh, lecture so from there you can say that v5 over v4 is equal to r over rc okay so this we already derived in the last lecture that v5 over v4 is equal to r over rc okay and if i can put this value because here it is mentioned v4 over v5 so i can say it will be rc over r K minus 1. Okay, so RC value is known to me, R value is known to me, T4 value is known to me. From here, I can easily find the value of T5. This 
2666.4 value of t4 and value of rc is 1.32 and value of r is 9 and k minus 1 is 0 0.4 Okay, and if I can solve it, it will be T5 becomes 1, 2, 3, 7 Kelvin. Okay, so now all the temperature values are known to me. So I can easily uh, find the total Q supply, which is between 3 to 2 and 3 to 4, which is the addition of these two QN. And also I can easily apply here as well for Q rejection. Okay, so you can just note it down, then move towards the next part. Okay, so as we already know that your total QS, uh, which is the combination of uh, heat addition at constant volume and heat addition at constant pressure, is Cv T3 minus T2 plus Cp T4 minus T3. Okay, and I have all the temperature uh, uh, with us because uh, we have already found the previous slides. Okay, so CV value we can easily find from the thermodynamic table A2 or you can also remember it. T2 value is 729.6, CP value is 1.005, T4 value is 2.66.4 and T3 value is 2020. And if I can solve it, it turns out to be 1562.58 kilojoule per kg. Okay, so similarly for QR, where it is a constant volume heat rejection process, so CV T5 minus T1 is the fine uh, between the points 5 and 1, okay, and CV value is 0 0.718. T5 value is known to us with us that it is 1237 from the previous slide, and T1 value is from the problem statement 303 Kelvin okay and if I can solve it it will be 663.14 kilojoule per kg so part A is to find the thermal efficiency so as you already know that your thermal efficiency 1 minus Q out over Q in okay so Q out is known to us and Q in is known to us so I can easily say that it will be 0.14 and Q in is 1562.58 and if I can solve it, it turns out to be 0 0.5756 or 57.56 percent. Okay, so this is the part A, or you can also apply the same relation which we already derived in the previous lecture, which is the function of compression ratio, pressure ratio, and uh, cutoff ratio. Okay, or you can use this relation as well. So it's up to you for part A. Okay, so now you have to just note down, then I'll move towards the part B. Okay, so your second part or part B is, if you just uh, go back to your problem statement, the power develop if number of working cycle are 3 per second. Okay, so if you already know that your power equation, which is equal to work done per cycle into number of cycles per second. 
okay so a number of cycle per second is mentioned in your question which is in part 2 that 3 per second and then work done per cycle so work done per second uh, cycle is equal to mass of working fluid qs which is total q supplied and q rejected so in this question qs and qr we have already found in the part a and m is not known to us so for m we can easily apply one relation p1 v1 over rt1 so p1 is given in your question which is one bar so you have to convert it into pascal and then v1 we have already defined in the part a which is the combination of v swept and v clearance and that is 0 0.0165 and value of r come from your thermodynamics table which is table a2 and then t1 is also known to you by the problem statement okay so from here i can easily find the value of m which is equal to 0.0189 kg okay so now i can find the work done because this is the work done per cycle so 0.0189 which is the m and qs is from the previous part 1562.58 and qr is 1263.14 and if i solve it it turns out to be 16.9 kilojoule okay and from there i can find the total power developed okay so work done per cycle is 16.9 and number of cycles per second is 3 so from here i can find 51 kilowatt is the power developed okay so this is the solution for your part number b okay so the solution is done now and if you have any question you can ask me or you can note down the Okay, so coming towards the question uh, which you have to solve okay so this is a very simple question uh, which i have already solved in the start of this lecture an oil engine working on a dual combustion cycle has a compression ratio of 12 explosion ratio is 1.2 if the cutoff occurs 7 percent of the stroke find the ideal efficiency so only data is different so rest of the problem is almost same so all the students who send to me the clear presentation of their work will get 0.2 absolute marks and you can send it to me by tonight or either you can send it to me by tomorrow so if you have any question you can ask me or note down the question because you cannot find in the textbook 